Hello babies, and welcome to another episode of Read OMC. Today we are going to be continuing with our chapter book, Hope Was Here, and we're going to be reading chapter six. Grime Square, 0800. I was with a group consisting of Braverman and four teenagers from Mulhoney High, members of the Students for Political Freedom Coalition. Adam Pulver, pug-faced president of the club, shook my hand like he was running for Congress. A force. Adam handed out clipboards with petitions and pens and made sure everyone knew the rules. Only registered voters from town can sign. Only legible signatures are accepted. Always thank people for their time, whether they've signed or not, even if they are jerks and morons. Braverman tossed the peanut in the air and caught it in his mouth. Adam raised his mechanical pencil. If any information is wrong on these petitions, if a person signs who thinks he's registered and isn't, if an address is wrong, whatever, the signature doesn't count. Too many of those and we could get kicked off the ballot. I've seen it happen again and again. Again and again was doubtful because Adam was maybe 17. More teenagers were showing up to get petitions. It didn't take long to find out why. Leon. GT gave me a job bussing tables when my dad had an accident and couldn't work. Jillian. GT let my cousins live in his extra apartment when they couldn't pay the rent on their house. Bryce. GT sent food every week to my family when my mom was in the hospital. Adam Pulver faced the group. It's not going to be easy out there today, but remember, our cause is just. He squinted into the sun like a hard-bitten campaign pro and said with a slight crack in his voice, Now let's get out there and do something for America. He always says that, Jillian whispered to me. Doing something for America is trickier than it sounds. You tell me what this world's coming to, a plump woman with a plump child said to me, when the voter's choice for mayor is between a dying man and a crook. Well, I began, I've known GT for 25 years, the plump woman continued, and there's no denying he's a fine man, but that doesn't qualify him to be running for mayor with no experience and leukemia to boot. She had a point. I looked desperately around. Braverman was behind me listening in. Help, I mouthed. GT's been on the school board, Braverman countered. He helped us get those dangerous steps repaired at the high school. He brings food to people when they're having financial trouble. That's true. He worked hard to get that emergency medical center in town so people didn't have to drive 25 miles to the nearest hospital. Braverman held out the petition, said her signature just allowed GT to be on the ballot officially. The woman's child drooled on the petition. She signed. Thank you. Braverman wiped the paper on his leg. You won't be sorry. I'm sorry every day of my life, young man. She plodded off. Encouraged by Braverman's victory, I approached a man walking toward me. He was holding the hand of a little boy who looked just like him. I flashed my toothpaste ad smile. Excuse me, sir, but we're out collecting signatures from registered voters to get GT Stoop on the ballot for mayor, and I was wondering if you, the man kept walking, might want to sign this so that GT can... The man walked faster. The boy was running to keep up. You want me to vote for some guy who flips burgers on a grill and who's half dead with leukemia? You want to sell me some desert real estate in the rainforest while you're at it? Excuse me for breathing, but I don't think a father should be acting like that in front of his son. I watched that man turn the corner fast. I'll bet you hard catch that my father would never do anything like that. Braverman was standing in front of me, casting a shadow. Come on. We can team up. The rest of the morning went down like cold rolls with a hot meal. We knocked on doors and got seven slammed in our face. A mother holding a shrieking infant asked if we babysat. An old man holding a rifle told us to get off his property. We obeyed instantly. Three women said GT was a fine man, but their husbands needed their jobs at the dairy. It's amazing how many ways people can tell you to buzz off. We'd had enough for one day. The humidity made everything seem heavy. The hot sun beat down. Braverman and I were walking through Grimes Square. I was hungry. In New York, you could always get a hot dog from a street vendor. No street meat here. A store called Wisconsin Giftique had a window display with small colored cheeses in the shape of farm animals. I felt like Dorothy, plopped down in Munchkinland. A noisy dairy truck rumbled by too fast. Painted on the side, milk doesn't get any fresher than this. Just ask the cow. I turned to Braverman. What's with the big bad dairy? Braverman threw a stick. 
That's our mystery around here. Some people say they funded Millstone's campaign and he lets them do whatever they want. I've heard they basically own the people who work for them. Bryce's dad was a factory manager there for a while. His boss told him he had to contribute to Millstone's campaign. What did he do? He quit. Braverman stopped at a long driveway that led to a huge new house with white pillars. That's the mayor's new place. Wow. I looked at the three-car attached garage, garage, the baby evergreens lining the walk. He built it last year. He said his wife inherited a ton of money. Braverman put his hand over his heart. How else could a small-town mayor afford a place like this? What do you mean? Braverman's jaw locked. Maybe Millstone's lying. You think the dairy gave him the money? I think there's a reason the real fresh dairy does whatever it wants to around here. Cranston Broom's the owner and he knows how to play it. He and Millstone are big buddies. They play golf, go deep sea fishing. Broom's dairy workers clean up the park by the railroad tracks. His trucks deliver free milk to the schools, so people let them alone. I thought of little kids drinking tainted milk. I thought of Gleason Beal hiring me at 15 and giving me all of that responsibility opening up on the weekends. I thought of the raise he gave me right before he stole our money, which, of course, was his way of taking the raise back. It was probably easier in the old days when the bad guys rode into town wearing black capes or whatever bad guys wore and the milk cows were owned by honest people. Right off the bat, you'd know who you were dealing with. Now everybody dresses alike. That's the problem with progress. The yo-yo was doing amazing things. A perfect double loop around the world. The longest walk the dog I had ever witnessed. Braverman flicked his wrist and the orange Duncan snapped back into his hand. That was great, Braverman. I'm a little rusty. That was rusty? The muscles in his face looked chiseled out of rock. I think I had misjudged him on the male cuteness scale. I would definitely put him at a 7.4. We were across the street from the welcome stairways. GT was sitting on a park bench in front of the diner talking to a few old people. I had to ask, do you know how GT's doing, Braverman? Yo-yo in the pocket, big sigh. He's had a pretty rough time. The chemotherapy made him so tired. He couldn't be around people during part of it, which drove him crazy. He'd be stuck upstairs calling the diner to see if we were handling things. Braverman laughed. I'd have the phone under my chin, trying to cook, telling him everything was under control when it wasn't. You really helped him. He shrugged. I just did my job. He's waiting to find out if he goes into remission. Remission means the cancer's gone, right? Or gets better for a while. We'll take what we can get. We walked closer. You want to know why to vote for a man who's fighting for his life? We heard GT say because no one understands how sweet life can be, how blessed every minute is, how important it is to say and do what's right while you've got the time, more than a person who's living with a short wick. An old woman was hanging on his every word. I took a chance, handed her the petition. Are you a registered voter, ma'am? I've been voting since Harry Truman took office. She signed it, handed it to the woman next to her, who'd been voting probably since Abe Lincoln took office. Then three other people signed. Thank you, Bretts. GT got up, gave a weary smile, and walked slowly across the street and up the welcome stairways, head shining. People are sneaky. A check of voter signatures proved this out. Somebody signed Eleanor Roosevelt. Somebody wrote when hell freezes over. Some signatures were impossible to read. I was sitting in the back booth with Braverman and Adam, checking the petition names against the list of registered voters from the Board of Elections. Adam had gotten the most names today. He'd gone to the emergency medical center that GT helped get built and asked wounded people for their support. His petition had blood stains on it. He said blood added to the glory of the fight. Jillian and Bryce ran into the diner. We got 12 names at the A&P, but that creepy guy kept following us down the street. Bryce pointed nervously out the window as a black funeral hearse parked in front of the welcome stairways like the darkest omen of what was to come. The driver looked like an evil henchman. He was one of the men wearing a vote for Eli Millstone button I'd seen in the diner the first night we'd gotten here. Lou Ellen was taking her break, reading her personal copy of Soap Opera Digest like she'd be tested on every word. Yuck, she said, looking out the window at the hearse. Those things give me the creeps. 
Her face pinched together when she said it. So far, there was nothing about her I could find to like. Braverman stormed to the window. Adam marched behind him. I could get a convict suit, follow Millstone around, see how he likes it. The two of you sit down. It was GT. You know what bullies want. They want a rise out of you. That's what feeds them. GT took signal singles out of the cash register and started counting. Braverman clenched his fists. GT looked at us with such kindness in his face. I'll tell you what my mother told me long ago. She was a good Quaker woman, listened for God to speak to her every day. She said you've got to love yourself with all your shortcomings. And you've got to love the world, no matter how bad it gets. Boy, would I make a lousy Quaker. Adam Pulver glared at the floor tile. We're not going to win this way, GT. Then the thing's not worth winning. GT put the money in the cash register and looked out the window as the hearse rounded the corner, coming back for more. All right, babies, that's the end of chapter six. I love you very much, and I will see you tomorrow.